Hi everybody, are we here? Are we live? We're here. <laughs> Hi everybody. Okay, welcome back. Welcome back. It's been it's been since November, I think, since the last time I recorded. So it's been a couple of months. Thank you for being patient. But I know that we've gotten a few new people. Thank you to everyone who is new on my YouTube channel. And if you're watching this on Facebook, um, you can watch it here. I'm going to be recording here, but also going to be posting um, all of my videos to YouTube afterwards. So you can check that out. That's at Alicia Diane Art. All right, guys. So we're going to be continuing in. Um, I want to finish up this series. I don't want to rush through it, but I realize that it's been a couple of months and we didn't finish this series yet. So I really would like to finish it. I'm studying the master series. It's each, I guess, um, section of them or a block that I'm doing or, or season, if you will, is 10 episodes. So we've done six. So I'm going to do four more. And then I'm going to get into something a little bit different. I'm going to be um, going off of the, I guess, regular what I've been doing, which is like sort of like these, these um, fan art tutorials or like studying tutorials that I've been doing. I'm going to be doing something completely different, um, but I think that you will like it if you're interested in comics. If you're interested in graphic novels, then maybe you'll really like it. <laughs> it's going to be exciting, guys, so I hope that you all check it out. So, to start, I am going to be using this lovely reference book. I'm not going to keep it up because it is a recreation and I want to respect the copyright of whoever owns this, but <laughs> there's probably Disney Studios, but it's this picture right here. And you've probably seen it before. It's actually from the, um, like my favorite Disney movie, which is um, Saludos Amigos. It's the a uh, short film where they travel to South America and then go to Peru and then some other Argentina and some other countries and and the artists just kind of have a field day just you know painting the people and studying the atmosphere and they just make these little stories based off of the sketches that the artists create and that's why I kind of love that movie so much because it's so just different than than mostly what we see in animated films, especially with with the Disney, especially with like, even though it's a short film, it's 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 not like a like a five minute short. It's like a 30, 40 minutes or something like that. But anyway, it's one of my favorites. If you have not seen it yet, you might want to check it out on your Disney Plus. It's on there if you guys have Disney Plus, or I'm sure you can probably find it somewhere else. I know I also have the DVD. The DVD also comes with um, the like brother or sister movie which is The Three Caballeros which is also a great one. I love that one too. Alright guys without further ado let's get started. I'm going to go and grab a color here in my Photoshop. I want to use like a a lighter blue to get started and just kind of sketch in and everything. I'm going to look at these big objects. Oh, and this would be a good time to test out my Photoshop pens. I'm in a different location than I was last time I recorded. I'm back in my old apartment, so I'm back in California now, but I have a totally new and different setup. It will probably still be changing because I'm kind of like redecorating as we speak, but what do you guys think of the new environment <laughs> for video recording? I, I think it's, it feels good. I didn't like when I was recording from with the Moana background. I liked my Moana poster and I still love that movie. But the thing that I didn't like about that was that my desk was backed up into a wall. And I realized that I really don't like working against the wall. I like having my back kind of open and having some space and breathing room because I felt like I was kind of like held captive to my <laughs> held captive working or something like that. It just felt, I don't know, stifled. And once I got the opportunity to start drawing with, um, with my back open, it felt so much better, so much more natural. It 
felt so much more ah so I wanted to change my little office that we have going on here and I have so much more space I feel so much better I can switch between this desk which is my computer Cintiq desk to my little corner over there which I have my watercolors set up and my markers set up and even my little model references you can see I have my little hand <laughs> I got this from Ikea it has a hand and I have a body one too I've never used these before but I think it's kind of cool to have them like especially when you're doing a lot of poses it's good to have these little models and I got them for like 10 bucks on Ikea on Ikea at Ikea you can probably get them cheaper on Amazon but I was there <laughs> I was there so I was like hey I'm gonna get these because I think I can use them and actually it's kind of nice to have that without having to you know Google all your poses if you're doing something that's complicated which does happen a lot when you're making comics you might have like a pose or something that feels a little bit more complex and you have to go about googling it so it's kind of nice to just have like a little a little model it's not very detailed so you do have to still practice your figure drawing so i hope that you guys have been figure drawing this whole time i need to getting like flummy <laughs> i don't know if flummy is the right word it's definitely not a an appealing word, but I felt kind of phlegmy. Don't worry, I don't have COVID. I hope I don't have COVID. I don't because I just got vaccinated. <laughs> and I have no flu symptoms. I just felt suddenly phlegmy for a moment. But yeah, it's weird. I did get my first COVID vaccination. Obviously, I'm not over 65, but um, I do work in an at-risk, you can say, or, um, what's the word? I work with kids. <laughs> I recently started a mentor position. Um, it's voluntary, where I am helping a nonprofit by teaching kids animation, and it's really cool because we're using Dragon Frame, and I've never used Dragon Frame before. Um, you guys know that I, I posted some different stop motion videos, um, and I've made a couple of stop motion shorts, really silly, Good Girl Princess series. If you haven't seen it, it is on my channel, but <laughs> you're not obligated to watch it. But it's kind of my favorite thing ever. <laughs> it wasn't very popular, but it was so much fun to make. Anyway. Um, yeah, so I started doing that, mentoring. I guess I can update you guys on what I've been doing the last couple of months since you haven't, <laughs> haven't heard from me in a while. I'm so sorry that that happened, but, you know, I do have a, a pretty big library on YouTube, and I plan to make it a whole lot bigger, so hopefully there was enough content. I know you're not just watching mine, but <laughs> clearly... But I think I have a good amount of content on there for people, even if they're, they're new to my channel, for them to go and, and check out the other stuff that I put up. Um, the, over the last, how many years have I been recording? Four years? I think it's four years that I've been recording. Something like that. Anyway, I think it's, I think there's some stuff. But I definitely would like to explain continue to just keep on expanding my channel little by little and I can use you know all of the feedback <laughs> thank you to you guys who have like commented I got a couple of things that you know people really appreciate these videos and it makes me happy because I feel like I'm doing something positive <laughs> with my life for once <laughs> just kidding but I do feel like I'm doing something positive when I do um, these videos, and it makes me feel happy. <laughs> like, so why didn't you record all this time? Yeah, no. It's been so, like, 
crazy. I also have another job that also makes me eligible for um, the COVID vaccination, which um, I've been working at a paint and sip place, teaching painting classes for the last seven months, almost eight months. And um, even though it's a paint and sip, uh, they sell like food and wine and beer and stuff so they're technically considered to be a restaurant so because of that i've been also eligible because i guess now restaurant workers are also eligible for the covid vaccine which i didn't know but that is a good thing um i haven't had any side effects yet it is a little bit sore in my left arm which i got it on my left um I got the Moderna. I didn't choose Moderna. I just got what I was called into. I was like on a backup list. <laughs> I was on the backup list and I was able to, um, so like whenever the backup list is basically like, so anybody who doesn't show up for their COVID vaccine, um, the vaccines are only good for that day. So they have like a list of people they still have to be eligible for the vaccine, but the list is of people who, who kind of, but you kind of, they don't really give you any warning. They're like, all right, can you be here in 30 minutes? And I'm like, uh, yes. <laughs> so that's kind of how it works for me. Um, let's see. All right, I think I'm kind of happy with this. I'm kind of happy with this as a starting point. I think it's kind of clear. I like the composition. Um, that's one thing to really study when you're looking at Mary Blair. Is like the composition is always pretty on point, which is really neat. Um, hmm. I haven't done this in a while. I don't know where to start. <laughs> start adding some color. There's this nice creamy color. So I'm gonna just like paint. There's this nice creamy color that she has in certain spots. Let's see how this works. Alright, so let's see if I can find a color. It's kind of Make my brush bigger. You can do that automatically when you hold Control Option. I think it's cooler than that. Cooler and closer to blue. But it's still like a yellow tint. So maybe just a little bit more with the green. Because blue and yellow makes green. We all know that, don't we kids? <laughs> we all know that blue and yellow makes green, hopefully. I do have this handy, I don't know, I just feel like sh sharing, oversharing today. I have this neat thing that I got when I was studying art education for a while and I dropped out. <laughs> I didn't really drop out. I just continued my pursuits in another area. <laughs> because I was, I don't know, I wasn't sure if I wanted to do that for, for a long time. But I want to show you really quickly. This is really neat. I think, I don't know if, what website these are from. But I think you can order these. It has like all the elements of art. Well, I'm sure that Amazon must have it. But if you wanted to really support like a art business i think dick blick sells them flick arts you can check those out and see anyway it has like the color charts does it have the mixing i thought it had like the mixing i know i'm going off the rails here <laughs> but all for good reason all for good reason all to share my my thoughts with you lovely people um yeah shape form texture i think more and more about this stuff as i like teach art 
and I realized that I'm using terminology that I didn't really use before, like rhythm. Anyway, this is a nice cool reference if you are ever interested. And some of you know, because I've said it 10,000 times before, <laughs> I didn't have art classes when I was in um, primary school. I know that's not even I'm not English. Why am I saying primary school? Actually, I am 25% English. <laughs> primary school, I mean like grade school, all the way up to like high school, I never had art classes. Like, I know I'm sad. But yeah, I didn't have art classes, I had an art history class. But when I was learning about art education, it really was a lesson to me because there was all these elements of art that, you know, existed and I was using, but I wasn't even like aware of them. So I don't know, it's kind of a cool thing to, to learn, or at least be familiar with, I think. It can be pretty cool. I feel like I need to sneeze. Hopefully I don't. I'd rather not sneeze if I can help it. But I'm just kind of, I guess, penciling in some of these areas. And you can do this with any painting, basically. You can do this with any art that you like. Um, it doesn't have to be... Mary Blair, but Mary Blair is a great place to start because her art is, it teaches you so much about color and composition, I think. I think it really does. So I'm just kind of right now locking in what we call blocking in colors. I think flooding might be a little bit more for like, oops. Um, sometimes flooding is like considered non-specific, so you wouldn't actually go in with the actual colors, you just kind of block in anything like in the range of those colors, and then you can change them later, but I'm going to block in the colors, I want to keep them as close to what I'm actually going to be using as possible because I don't plan to really change them too much. I mean, there's a bit more yellow and a darker than maybe different areas. And right now I only have basically two layers that I'm working with. There's the background layer but that was already there but just a locked white layer and everything else. So it's just two layers. I'm trying to think what I want to do with this. How detailed I want to be on this loose, lucky layer, background layer that I have. I'm going to need a bunch of layers get this anywhere close to finished, but I'm just trying to see where I am right now. I'm going to take this, take a similar color, and just go around. Because in the reference, there's like, there's more than one yellow that's happening. So I'm just going to I'm going to pencil that in a little bit, make some happy trees. Let's see what it looks like without the sketch layer. Mm. Hmm. It's kind of cool. It's kind of interesting. I'm digging it. Got a ways to go, but it's not a bad start. 
The breakfast of champions. <laughs> so cheesy. I don't know why that just came to my mind. It's like I don't even know where it comes from. Where does that come from? That saying people say breakfast of champions. I don't know. It's probably a sports reference, which is why I have no idea what it means. So this original one is like it could be either gouache or watercolor. Um, if it's squash, then it was used like watercolor, which is the only way that I really like to use squash. You know, I'm not a huge fan of squash, but I'm glad that I learned how to use it. But on any given day, I would choose watercolor. I love, I love watercolor. That one is a pain in the butt to learn also. It's not easy to learn, but once you learn it, It's like earning the trust of a cat. <laughs> it like hates you at first and it will scratch you and it will turn on you. But once you befriend that cat, it's like your best friend. Gouache is like a rabbit cat <laughs> or like a wild coyote or something like that. Gouache is like a whole other level of difficult. But you know, it's like one of those things, it's like once you can master it, you're like so much more proud that you can because you know, you've mastered this difficult thing. I always say like I don't know if I always say this, but I always think if you're going to work digitally, um, it's good to learn. It's good to learn some traditional stuff. I do pretty much all, of, I've done, I'll say, pretty much all of my videos as like digital tutorials, but I consider myself more of a I said that funny. <laughs> I do consider myself more a traditional artist. I didn't, I don't think, for a while. I think this is the first time I'm saying that out loud. That's why you heard the screech in my voice when I said that, like, what? <laughs> but I do, I think I, well, I am a traditional artist. Ooh, I'm seeing now that this people, these fig the figures are actually should be much lower, so I'm going to move them down. That's the one thing that happens too when you're coloring. That's the convenience of working digitally. You take a little bit more time to do it traditionally, but you can still move stuff around. It might take a little bit longer, but you can move stuff around. But I realize these, th these figures need to be lower. So I'm going to make them a little bit newer. save because we all know how Adobe products are. <laughs> Even though we love them, we know that they have a tendency to crash from time to time. And I would like to, which they haven't in a long time, but I think it's just that trauma of like, you know, when we were all learning Adobe like 10 years ago and they would crash on us co like constantly. <laughs> so even though it's not really that way anymore as I haven't had Photoshop crash on me, knock on wood that I don't have. Um, there. <laughs> I don't want to take the chance and I think I've just been programmed by those earlier versions of Photoshop to just not and of course Animate does still crash. But Photoshop has been pretty good with not crashing. So, why do I feel like I have allergies? I hope it's not that vaccination that gives me like allergies. 
Uh, <laughs> Alright, that goes back a little bit. Pass your feet. It's good to keep looking at your reference so you can see like where you're being consistent, where you're not being that consistent with your reference. I mean, if you're making something completely different, it doesn't matter that much, but if you're trying to emulate a certain style or aesthetic, then it's good to continue. Well, I think it's, I don't know, references are just a great gift, I think, overall. I still feel like my nose is running out. I might need to go ahead and get a tissue if it doesn't quit. Alright, so I'm gonna pencil in vaguely some of these other colors. I like this one, I think. That's not helpful. <laughs> I don't remember what I was talking about. I know I talked about my different positions. And what else did I talk about? I talked about the COVID vaccine. And what else did I talk about? Anything? just kind of really going to be loose with this. I'm not trying to make it formal right now. I'm just trying to fill in some of these bigger, blackier layers of sections, I should say. Monsters Inc. Hopefully you guys can't hear it because I don't want to have any copyright issues <laughs> anymore. No thanks. If I need to like put my AirPods on, though, I will. <laughs> Just kidding. I'm not gonna put my AirPods on while I'm doing this. Hmm. My people, I'm going to put them on the next layer. That's kind of a good start. There's a lot more to go, but I think it's a reasonable start, starting point. Alright, let's go ahead and add some color to these people. I think I'm going to use my lasso tool for that. So I can make it a little bit more exact. And I'll probably go over and use my lasso tool for some of those leaves just to get them a little bit more leaf shaped because right now they're definitely not um, very leaf shaped. I got a little bit more orange. And I just keep eyeballing, keep eyeballing. I 
And if you guys have questions about anything, any part of this, why I chose, or maybe I can answer that one right now since I had that question. Why did I choose Mary Blair? Well, I think the first answer to that is that I am a huge fan of folk art. I love folk art. I need to start collecting folk art because when, when I was around folk art a lot when I was living in New Mexico, I would be around it all the time and I think that's where I really got my love of folk art was living in New Mexico for six years and just seeing like the really neat, cool art that they had, especially the Mexican art and I just like loved it so much when I saw it and I'm just like wow and when I see when I look at um, well first of all not to mention that you know Saludos Amigos was one of my favorite films even as a kid um, when I, but when I look at Mary Blair's work she's probably one of the biggest if not in popular culture definitely within animation um, the closest that I see to like folk art style and I really appreciate that and not to mention I mean so much art is based off of her so her style um, which what which I always say I can definitely attribute it to um, to folk artists um, getting out what I'm trying to say here. <laughs> I definitely see the folk art in her work and I don't know, I really appreciate it and I really like it. Um, some people, I mean you could say that it's like appropriation, but I don't know, the fact that they did the films and like I don't know how to, how to put these to words. I do, but I'm trying to think of like the best way to put this to terms. Let me know what you guys can count on this one. So I can see that. Okay. But anyway. Um, I think maybe I want to... Oops. Unlock this. Go back to my explanation in a moment. Oh, that's too long though. Second. That's slightly, slightly better. All right. Anyway, I guess. I saw in her um, more of the folk art than I had seen in probably any artist in animation and obviously as an animator that animators, other animators, other artists within animation, you know, stand out to me probably first. I did the last series on actually the study, the last studying the master series was like directly about animators and visual development artists that I really enjoyed and I don't know something something else I also just got this book <laughs> and I was just felt so intri intrigued by it that I wanted to like you know try them out and learn from her so there's a couple reasons. There's a, probably a lot of reasons why I chose Mary Blair. Um, most people with animation know who she is. Um, and she also had that cool show in Orange County. What was that? In, I think it was in fall 2019. I know she's, it wasn't her that actually put the show on. She's passed away, but it was a exhibition of her work 
in Orange, California. Um, beautiful art, and that inspired me also. So several reasons, <laughs> clearly several reasons. All right, so now we have this goat, which I think that might be why I chose this particular picture actually, because the comic that I am currently creating, which is Jade's story, uh, many of you who have been following me um, are already aware of this comic that I've been working on for a long time now. <laughs> I actually got the concept um, in 2015 and I think I've been working on trying to figure out you know, what I was going to do with it. When did I actually decide I was going to make it a comic? I think in maybe 2016 I think or 17 I decided I was going to make it a comic. of his goat. I'm using the sketch I did, but it needs a little bit of alteration. So I'm going to modify it a little bit as I'm going over it with the lasso tool. Try to make it a little bit more anatomically pleasant. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's not a whole lot of detail in this piece, but at the same time, I was to look nice and I want it to look somewhat professional so I'm just going to go slowly through this and try and get a nice pleasing looking shape for my goat here. There we go. I like that. light sort of a cream color for my goat. Perhaps even a little bit lighter. Okay. I think that should work. Uh, my goat does have a lot of black color. You can still see the sketch layer that's on top, so it might, the color might look a little off, but that's because the sketch layer is still on. You guys can see that's there. And I'm not going to make it pure black. I'm going to make it more like a charcoal black, so it doesn't look so space alienish. would say that she intentionally chose a lot of these, you know, colors. Well, she was really good with color. I mean, that's like another reason. So, so nice with color. She has like always complimentary colors everywhere in her stuff. Alright, so there's that. for a second. Whatever happened to you? That was strange. The air just went Alright, so I think I'm going to block in some of these other shapes a little bit more. Let's see what we got. That's not bad. That's a nice little image. Even though it doesn't have like all the detail and stuff, it's still a nice little image. Let's go ahead some more leaves, some better shaped leaves. I'm going to come in with my lasso tool. And I 
pick some colors that I like. I'm going a little bit deeper than what this is. Make some shapes. Option delete will fill it in. that I did also want to talk about was that I just reopened or just opened a new um, meetup group. I haven't done meetup since the pandemic um, so I'm excited to be starting again. I think I'm mostly going to be hosting these online events where I'm doing well you'll be still be able to have access to them but I will be doing some in-person events um, soon as get safer and safer to be out in public of course we'll do social distancing and practice safety measures but I just think it's I think it's time everything's kind of slowly but surely opening back up I think we're all kind of ready to be back meeting people again um, even if that means that we are still wearing masks for a while I mean it'd still be nice to to meet people again we haven't done it in so long. It's been a really long time. It feels like a really long time because it has been. It's been a year. But I think I think it's ready to you know slowly start doing that again. So I have taken the first step and I've opened a new <laughs> meetup group. And um, that is up right now. If you're already friends with me on Meetup, you can check it out if you're in the Los Angeles area um, you can check it out it is called um, cartoonists and animators community of Los Angeles very simple very 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 to the point I wanted people to really know what it's about <laughs> and so I wanted to make it really clear and easy to find for people who are interested in animation and cartooning which is making comics for the longest time, I didn't know what cartooning was. When I was um, when I first went to animation school, I didn't know what cartooning was. I didn't understand. <laughs> I didn't know it was called cartooning. Um, I remember like seeing cartooning as a as a degree option, and I was like, um, "But I'm an animation student. Am I aren't we cartooning?" <laughs> I didn't understand. But um, yeah, it's just another term that people use to be more specific about exactly what they're doing in the art field, which is good. People distinguish things. All right, I think I'm going to add in some of that darker color now because there are these big contrasting like black colors. I want to add some of those in. Add them on a different layer. Oops. All right, so I'm going to start to add those in. I'm going to use like a cooler dark color. It's not going to be pure black, it's going to be like a deep blue. So I'm going to use the lasso tool first, and then after I'm finished lassoing in some of these, I'm going to use like a, I guess like a charcoal to kind of um, add in some more details. And what I'll probably do is make this a little bit transparent so it's not so um, overly contrasty with what we're already doing. So let's see. Mm, that looks nice. Interesting. Let's continue. So 
she almost has like some of these areas um, cut out like leaves and so she's making like these leaf cutouts of the soup again with this other dark contrasting color. Contrast is also one of those elements. Um, I don't remember in which part of it, but that's definitely on that little sheet of whatever you call them, elements of art making. That looks cool actually. I kind of like it. Kind of kind of dig it. Let's see. And it gives it another bit of flair. Pun definitely intended for the art and flair of Mary Blair. is kind of fun. <laughs> Making art is fun. I always say, I don't always say that, but I always think it. I love when I can have fun when I'm making art. Don't you, friends? <laughs> Not to get all Bob Rossi on you, but I don't know. There's something really fun about making art. I guess that's why I do it for a living. <laughs> Even though I always say, there I go again, saying I always say. <laughs> but the thing I do always say is, the only reason why I became an artist is because I'm no good at math. <laughs> Can't really do that. I don't know why I feel like that's the only other job there is, is being good at math, but <laughs> I don't know. Isn't it? Don't you have to be good at math for all the other job titles out there? <laughs> Seems like it to me. Even like being an entrepreneur, which oddly enough I am, um, you have to be good at math or hire someone that's good at math, which I think is a good option. <laughs> I'd rather hire somebody else that's good at math and try to figure out how to do math on my own. That's why I love when people can do my taxes for me because I don't understand it at all. I'm so glad I have someone to do my taxes for me who understands how it works because it all looks like gibberish to me. Alright, keep on making these lovely shapes. There's also like um, even darker colors, so I think I'll come in also another time. I mean, a second time. Other, like an even darker color for some of these areas, these shadowy type areas. I also have to pencil in her chickens. She's got like, I don't know if they're, they look like chickens to me. I guess they're chickens. I don't know what other type of dead bird you would have in a basket on your head. Personally, I wouldn't want any dead bird in a basket on my head, but it's just me. <laughs> you know what, I think I'll, I'll go ahead and grab, oops, I'll go back and forth between this darker color. Even darker color. And I'll add it every so often. Give it even more contrast.
that's kind of cool. These two different very dark colors kind of meeting together. That's nice actually. I kind of like that a lot. Not that I came up with it on my own. It's just like <laughs> It's just a nice, it's, it's a whole other, like, I don't know, it, it, it feels like problem solving to me when you're trying to translate um, one way of making art to another. So it does feel gratifying and satisfying to translate a watercolor painting into digital because it's, it still takes that thinking that, like, okay, I don't know, how does this work? How does that work? Like, how would she do this in the digital language? So it's kind of like a little problem solving game, like a puzzle almost. And it feels kind of cool when you, when you have some success with it. It's like, oh, okay, I understand now. survey time. <laughs> I have put a little question here on my new meetups page. Um, and the question is, what is most helpful or beneficial to you? And even if it doesn't apply, I still want you to kind of like think or well, just like, you know, still even if you're like not close by and you couldn't attend like an uh, in-person workshop, still, you know, if, if it was offered to you, if it was available to you, what would be the most beneficial for you? Is it like workshops? Is it um, in-person workshops? Online tutorials? Um, is it very specific? tutorials um, maybe maybe it's with either it's with digital painting or maybe it's with making comics like what type of content I guess I'm trying to figure out is most beneficial to you watching uh, or consuming or being a part of or like you know maybe it's being in a Facebook group with other creators who are doing similar things as you um, so let me know if you can if you would like Please, you can enter it into the comments. Um, what type of content would be most beneficial for you? Because I do want to learn how to be as, what's the word? Just as useful as possible. I don't want to just, just be making stuff that's not helpful. I mean, I do think what I make is helpful, but I would like it to be as helpful as possible. So, and as, I guess um, valuable as possible and I can only really do that with like knowing what it is that's going to be valuable for you so please let me know if you will <laughs> what sort of content would be the best for you or what you know even if it's something I didn't say if you have like a whole other idea of something that you would you know that you think would be helpful then you know let me know I'll definitely be checking out the comments section, so the comments portion. Oops. Let me do that. Redo. Redo. And trying to find uh, the ways that I can most benefit you all who are taking the time out of your busy schedules to do some some self development, some sketching, some. All of that stuff. I take your time seriously at all state. <laughs> Why did I say all state? I don't know. It just felt like that was meant to be some type of commercial or something. But definitely, like, I really would like to know.
even if it's just like you know well, I would what would be more helpful to me is like weekly videos on this or monthly videos or this or whatever is what you think you would like or even just like a like a like a zoom like a in person or like a like a zoom meeting so like even if you're not in California where I'm at I could host like a zoom meeting and we could get together some type of way <laughs> and have a conversation about some art making that would be you know if that is where you're at where you would like to you know focus on since I just want to figure out like what is going to be the most helpful I guess all right so you guys heard me say helpful enough times but <laughs> let me know let me know in the comments what you guys are and it would be very helpful to me. <laughs> there I go with that word again. There goes that word again. I like this. This is really cool. I love these little bushes and stuff. It's so like loose but like so fun to draw. I don't know something about loose drawing sometimes is like even more fun <laughs> than any other type of drawing. It's just it just kinda it's fast and then it just feels when it's like I don't know when it's working. When you can see it's working even though it's loose, that's like really fun for me. I think that's kind of like my favorite way of of drawing. Or is it? Is that my favorite way of drawing? I love making loose drawings that I like. That feel like they're, they're saying what I want to say. Even though they're loose, they're still saying, you know, what I want them to say. But that is really cool to me. Alright, I'm going to add some, some, some other color as well. I don't Details, you know, the more quiet it gets on my end. <laughs> it's not intentionally, it's just like one of those things. Changing the filter on here. Not the filter, but like the.
cool is it that she did this all in watercolor? Or gouache, I don't know. Either way. Watercolor, I mean gouache used like watercolor doesn't feel like gouache at all. It just feels like watercolor. Which is why a lot of watercolors will use gouache as watercolor. It doesn't feel so gouache. <laughs> going with how I feel right now, how I feel it would be most beneficial, just a little bit of creative lesson, not a whole lot, just some of this almost as like a shadow. Which is what she has like this shadowy effect happening in some areas. It's not all over the place, it's just kind of Taking a little bit of creative, creative liberties, but um, with good intention. Areas more color than others, different light and shadow. I'm not gonna finish this today or right now because I do have to <laughs> have to run soon. I know I gotta pick up my son soon. He has his first day back in school today, which is so exciting. I'm so glad that he's able to see his friends again. I know it's kind of like Kind of like a hard thing to kind of figure out if it's the right time. I don't know if it's too soon, but I'm really glad because I think it's it's time. It's just been so long. I couldn't imagine like not seeing my friends for a year when I was 15 years old. That was, especially as a, <laughs> as a girl, it's probably worse. You know, social weekend be. <laughs> but you know, men might not, or men and and boys and young men. I not express it as much, but I know they are also very social, and they they do that interaction with their peers just as much as the rest of us do, just as much as us ladies do. This is fun, like I said. Try this out, guys. Try this out and see see how far you get. You know, it's one thing to watch, but you're only going to get the full full benefit is if you try it yourself. I know this from like my own experience. Um, there's a lot of times when I've watched other artists on YouTube and stuff like that, or even in like classes, which I've been taking a lot of like online classes since since the pandemic. Um, it's one thing to watch, but 
never really learn it until you do it yourself. So I would recommend doing it yourself, giving it a try. Even if you're doing it on an iPad, just give it a shot. Just, you know, try to rough in some of the different, the composition, some of the colors. Even if you want to try it like traditional, like with medium, um, watercolors, whatever, give it a try. That's how you really learn when you, when you do it yourself, when you're doing this and you go ahead and you just give it a shot yourself. That's how you really learn. It sticks. That's what I'll say. It sticks. Okay. Save it. That's starting to look cool though. Huh? We're getting someplace. It feels like we're getting someplace. I feel like we're getting someplace. I feel like we're making steady progress. Oops, that's the wrong color. Save it and let's see. I think I'm kind of happy with this as a start. Uh, we do have a ways to go. Actually, let me put in those chickens. Uh, don't want to leave them out. Fill in the chickens and then we will wrap it up for today and we will be back with the remainder tomorrow. Hope you guys enjoyed this time, by the way. I really had a good time. <laughs> I really love doing these things. It's a lot of fun. And like, it's always like a puzzle. Like it, it always feels like you're solving a problem when you do these studying the masters. Which, puzzles don't always seem fun for everybody, but when you're doing an art puzzle, I don't know, it's something really cool about that. It's like you're it's really fun to like learn this stuff and figure it out and be like, oh, how does this work? How does that work? I don't know about you, but I love figuring out how art works. Okay. I'm gonna hide that sketch later again and just put in their little chicken mouths. And we'll, tomorrow we'll get going on the details. Does that sound good to y'all? Sounds good to me. Okay, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me today. Let me save that. Thank you. <laughs> and um, please share this video with your friends who love art making, who love Mary Blair, who love Disney stuff, whatever. If they love just drawing tutorials in general, or if they're interested in learning some stuff, share it with your friends. See my channel on YouTube. It's Alicia Diane Art. YouTube.com slash Alicia Diane Art. And that's my alarm. <laughs> Check it out. And please go to my website. It's AliciaDiane.com. A L I C I A D I A N N E.com. And um, yeah, check it out and see what's happening on there. <laughs> I appreciate your feedback. If you guys want to give a thumbs up or you want to comment, feel free to do so. And I will thank you greatly. <laughs> thank you guys. Have a great and wonderful day. And I am Alicia Diane. And I will see you guys in the next one. Okay. Have a good one.